So maybe you've come across the image while you've been searching through your Netflix list. Inventing Anna is the story of the fake heiress Anna Sukran or Delvi. We're not too sure at this point. And in it, we explore the incredible lies of a young woman who clearly needs some psychological help. And like all trainees, we in there like salt because the role of Dr. Millican is played by none other than Trinidadian Kieran J. Anthony, who joins us this morning on the Now Morning Show. Kieran, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Thank Welcome to the Now me. Morning Show, and thank you for putting that little Trini sprinkle into the mix of things, although you play <laughs> an American uh, character. Let's talk about the experience, because I'm not sure if you're aware, right now, this is the top trending show on Netflix in Trinidad and Tobago. Wow. So everybody is watching from home proudly saying, look, we boy. What was that experience like? <laughs> uh, it was, I mean, to be completely honest, you know, to have this as, I guess, you're, it's considered breaking the industry seal. You know, you have that first gig that just kind of gets your name out there. You know, it puts your name on the map, people see you. But aside from just the uh, uh, like side of it where you talk about like work and stuff, but for instance, having it with these people, with this story, with Julia, you know, it's Shonda Rhimes, it's just, uh, it's hard to, hard to explain, you know, the, the exact sort of um, confidence and just pride that you get knowing that you know, a little Trini boy could end up there and kind of hold his own with the big guns a little bit, at least try to hold his <laughs> own with the big guns a little bit. You absolutely held your guns because you, of course, it is saying, you know, if they have faith in you to stand in the room in a performance, solo performance anyways, with an Emmy Award winning actress, it means <laughs> that you should believe in yourself. So you're holding your own pretty well. <laughs> The Thank experience itself you. must be invaluable because Shonda Rhimes is not a small name and to be in Shondaland, as you put it, must have its own challenges and of course, incredible takeaways. Without giving away too much of the episodes or the feature that you're in, what was probably the most memorable experience you've had crossing paths with the Shonda Rhimes? <laughs> well, that day of shooting, I think, more so than just being involved with, with Shonda Rhimes and, and her world. You know, it was more so just seeing Julia work, you know, like sitting there across from her and just seeing her, her style, the way she would command the room, but in a way that everybody felt comfortable. You know, she, she's the real deal. She's a, a two-time Emmy winner, and she made me feel comfortable because I didn't reveal to them that this was my first, you know, gig until after we, we finished shooting. So the entire time I was like, all right, you're here. Just fake it till you make it. You know, <laughs> you, you trained for this. So just, just live. And the whole thing about, you know, we have this common misconception that acting is pretending and everything, but it's just trying to be as the most present you could be in a situation, you know, and seeing her sense of presence and just the way she could snap in and out of it was unbelievable. You said fake it till you make it, but this is not something that you've been faking <laughs> in any way. You may not have been on the big screen very much. I understand that you are, your first major role perhaps would have been as the Cassius Clay in the theater. So you still have had quite a bit of years acting. Mm -hmm. And of course, even in indie films as well. Tell me a little bit about the difference from being on stage versus indie films and then of course, television series. Well, on stage, personally, you command the entire room with your whole body. You know, your, your voice, your, your body, your movement, like you can see the entire actor on stage. The stories are a bit limited because again, you're limited to just what the stage can provide. You know, sometimes what the funding is behind the show. So you may not have as much, because sometimes they're just completely empty stages. But Personally, because I was trained for theater, so I was, I was classically trained for stage, I love it the most. I feel the most complete being on stage. And I think you ask any actor, they'll say that, you know, being on stage is just, you, it's incomparable. Like you, there's nothing else that compares to being on stage. But when you have um, film and TV, there's a lot more you can do with the stories. You know, you can expand the stories, you can get more intimate with the actors, 
you can tell these grand grand stories like we've seen all these blockbuster hits you know out there and even um some of the classical movies and stuff you know the big sets and everything so it depends on on how you look at it in terms of are you looking at it in the sense of what's more rewarding for the actor or what you can this type of story you can tell for the audience to enjoy fair now this actually was one of those uh, real stories that was put into <laughs> film by Netflix actually quite mm -hmm. recently, the 11th of February, and the case just wrapped, I think, earlier this week. So were you able to actually meet the character that you played at all for some inspiration or insight, or was this all Mr. Anthony himself? <laughs> Unfortunately, I wasn't able to, to meet her because I, I don't know the specifics about the visitation that they had because I know she was spending some time in the Rikers uh, last year, so I'm not sure exactly, you know, what the visitation was. I know they had correspondence with her, you know, just to get the rights to her story and to get some information, you know, in terms of the accent and everything that Julia had to use. But I just took it, you know, upon myself to say, well, aside from it being Anna Delvey, Anna Sorkin, you know, whichever name she's using at that point, this is a doctor who, you know, uh, who is dealing with a patient going through something really serious. And mm -hmm. so you, you get more specific in terms of you forget who the name is and just what the patient is going through in front of you in terms of you being, you know, that doctor. All right. Now, talking about serious things, you had a serious plan to come back home before this movie actually happened, coming in to open a clinic and getting to uh, actual, well, physical rehabilitation for sportsmen like you were. Um, and in terms of that change now, because, I mean, you can't come back home to do that now. <laughs> Is it something, though, that you may delve into in the future, perhaps combined because you used to write as well or might be writing still? What is next? Well, I have a couple um, situations in, in the works right now. Just some papers need to be signed. And, you know, hopefully, God willing, things work out. But in terms of actual medicine, I, <laughs> I think that ship has sailed for me. You know, but I, I have family members who are doctors. I have friends who are doctors now. And what makes me feel better is when they reach out and they're like, yeah, I, I, I could see you. I, I believe you as a doctor you know, seeing you in that situation. But I would love to have some type of involvement with, you know, track and field athletes and just upcoming athletes in the future because track was my first love. So, you know, anything that I can do to give back. And I think that is the mentality that I've grown into, you know, as, as I got older, is just switching that mentality of like, okay, what do I need? And then think, thinking of like, all right, how can I give back now? So there, there are many things that I want to do you know, within Trinidad, even if it's not me actual, uh, actually being a doctor or having, you know, any sort of clinic, but I would love to be involved. Fair. Well, now let's take the opportunity to give back advice, at least, to any young <laughs> theatre person, a budding actor or actress who wants to be that small fish in the big pond. Three top tips that you'd like to give to them that they could utilize to forward their career like you've done. Uh, number one, just believe in yourself, you know, just have that. If you have that dream, just think that, yeah, this is here for a purpose. You know, if you have the means to follow that dream, give it your all. But, you know, definitely believe in yourself. Number two, uh, do the work. And I think I said this earlier, like, I think that that is just as important as, as having a dream because there, there's going to be a lot, a lot of obstacles. You know, there, there's always something happening that would try to derail you or try to discourage you from following through. And number three, I would say just educate yourself. You know, because this, this was brand new for me. So I had to spend a lot of time educating myself and watching old movies, reading all these old books. You know, it's, it took a lot of time being away from home and being away from friends. But as long as you really make that sacrifice and make it wholeheartedly, I think that, you know, the sky's the limit. And for me, this is just a small step forward in the right direction. So there's still a lot more for me to learn and, and to be able to give back as well in the future. Perfect. Well, Kieran, in that case, we'll give you room to take those great steps and continue to move forward. Fly the flag high and continued success wished to you. We will be watching as 
Inventing Anna is currently airing on Netflix. It's a full-on series, so you will catch him in episode eight. And until then, you can find him on Instagram and perhaps a screen near you sooner rather than later. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Kieran Anthony, actor, Trinbigonian born, and definitely giving us some reason to shine this morning. Guys, it's in our morning show. We come back with more after these messages. <laughs>